Good morning and welcome to today's mission management brief, mission management team briefing. Here with us today we have Leroy Kane, chairman of the mission management team, to tell us about today's meeting. We'll take some uh, opening remarks and then have questions. Okay, thank you, Brandy. Well, good morning. It is uh, very nice to be with you here this morning as we wrap up uh, the uh, mission of Atlantis. I know that you had several briefers here in uh, in the recent days to talk about the docked mission and the successes of the docked mission. I don't have too much to add to that, um, except to say that uh, we're extremely pleased, of course, with the uh, accomplishments on the docked mission, uh, certainly uh, achieved and, and in fact uh, exceeded our expectations as far as, uh, as far as the objectives and the goals that we had for, uh, for this mission. So we're, uh, we're very, very happy about that. Um, as far as the shuttle, uh, the Atlantis uh, is uh, performing uh, quite well. The, uh, the team is in the midst of preparing the vehicle and the systems uh, reconfiguring from an on-orbit uh, orbiting spacecraft to get it ready for entry and landing um, as early as Wednesday. And so today in the mission management team, we reviewed the status of the systems and uh, we are working any new issues or have any new problems or anomalies. And uh, Atlantis is just in great shape. The crew on orbit is doing very well. Um, they completed the, uh, our final inspection. That's where the crew um, does a final inspection of the heat shield of the vehicle. And so the team will, uh, will analyze that data in the next uh, 18, 24 hours here, and then we'll discuss the results of that uh, probably as early as the mission management team tomorrow morning. Um, so we aren't working any issues. We're extremely pleased with, uh, with how the mission is going overall. It's been an outstanding effort, again, by this uh, very expansive, integrated team uh, to include the folks on the ground as well as crew on orbit and all the team around the world that helps us pull off these docked missions. So. Um, we're back now, very focused again on uh, getting Atlantis back home safely with the Atlantis crew, and uh, the team is uh, as well on their way to doing that as we uh, left the briefing today. So with that, I would be happy to take any questions. Okay, we'll start with questions here in the room, mm -hmm. if there are any, and then we have Bumbridge. State your name and affiliation first, please. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Um, uh, knowing that you haven't had a chance to review the data from the late inspection yet, but uh, assuming that it all comes back clean, and if you can um, compare, would you say this has been the cleanest flight for um, Atlantis or for the shuttle program, or as one of the cleanest flights? It seems that there were very minor problems, if there were any. Yeah, that's fair. fair characterization. It's certainly... Um, you know, cleanest, uh, that's hard to, to make that uh, um, assessment, at, at least until we get the vehicle on the ground. Um, but certainly it is in the family of the, the cleanest, uh, uh, best performing orbiters that we've had uh, in the past, uh, you know, six, eight missions. And we've had several, um, to include all of the missions in the last 12 months, um, where the, the vehicle performance has just been outstanding. And as far as clean in terms of the, of the, uh, the heat shield and all the uh, thermal protection system, uh, we, we've enjoyed um, uh, overwhelmingly excellent performance in all of the flight elements to include the external tank. And of course, uh, those things um, help a lot with respect to us being able to, uh, to fly uh, these very complicated dock missions uh, when we have to worry less about the vehicle on orbit and, and, and the systems uh, issues associated with anything like that. So um, certainly in the family of, of the cleanest, um, that's about the most I can say about it until we get her back on the ground. Thank you. And uh, assuming that you're going out to uh, Florida to watch Atlantis land um, or to see uh, the crew after, after they're back on the ground. Um, will watching, uh, because this might be the last flight of Atlantis, do you, will you be, do you think you'll assign a, um, an extra significance to the touchdown and to, uh, and to the walk around of the vehicle? Um, I, 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 yeah, I assume you, yeah, you're asking about me personally. I, I would have to say probably not. Um, quite frankly, every landing is, is pretty majestic. Every landing is pretty special all by itself, um, first, last, second, middle. Um, it's, uh, we're very focused on getting Atlantis and the crew back safely. 
Uh, once we do, um, at some point here, we'll, we'll know at some point in our future whether or not this is the last flight of Atlantis. Um, I'll know that for sure when, when Atlantis shows up in a museum somewhere. Until then, um, we're just focused on this mission and, uh, and taking them one at a time. Okay, I think that was the last question here in the room. We'll go now to the foam bridge, starting with Bill Harwood. Okay, uh, let's go instead first to Marsha Dunn. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, speaking of taking them one at a time, there are two on the books left, Leroy, and could you just sort of give a status update on where they stand, not just regarding shuttle processing, but payloads? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, STS 133, um, currently uh, we have a, a target launch date of September 16th. That's on uh, OE 103 Discovery. And the processing is going extremely well. Uh, the vehicle preparation is, is coming along nicely. Um, we have some challenges with respect to the payloads and uh, payload integration. Um, however, uh, we don't have any, uh, any firm dates. We're still in the, in the midst of evaluating the overall manifest for the payload and the cargo element. Um, what we have said, uh, Marcia, is that um, uh, within a week or two after a wheel stop of, of Atlantis, on this current mission, um, we'll do another uh, full evaluation of the uh, of the manifest for SDS 133 um, and SDS 134, the AMS mission, um, and uh, and just evaluate where we are with respect to the the uh, the training, the vehicle processing, the cargo integration, and uh, all of the uh, aspects that that play into our manifest decision. So, we're currently still targeting September 16th. Um, and uh, we'll evaluate that again here in, in a couple of weeks. Thank you. That's it for me. Okay. Let's go next to Irene Klotz. Thanks. Hi, Leroy. Um, I was just wondering if uh, there's been any changes in plans with the swap of 133 and 134 about leaving the, um, the orbiter boom sensor system on the station? Uh, no, we haven't really changed our plans. Um, it'll still be, uh, you know, the last mission or the last planned mission that we intend to do that. So uh, we're, per we're still pretty much on target with that plan. Thank you. Okay. Next up, uh, Tarek Malik. Thank you very much. It's uh, Tarek Malik from uh, Space.com. And, and Leroy, and uh, forgive me if you uh, addressed this earlier, um, you, were, you were mentioning, I guess, the the work to be done on Atlantis after uh, wheel stop and landing. I'm just kind of curious um, how uh, how late into June um, you can uh, go without word um, of any extra flights and still keep it uh, on the books for for that that contingency, or if um, if you have to wait until all the way to the end of the month. There, thanks. Well, we can go uh, quite a good long ways uh, actually with Atlantis. Um, before we need a decision uh, relative to whether or not Atlantis is going to fly again uh, as a planned mission to be, uh, which would be STS-135 as opposed to um, the LON vehicle and the LON mission um, currently uh, planned as 335 to be the LON for the mission STS-134. So um, we can go a good long ways from a vehicle processing, vehicle preparation, cargo element standpoint. Um, we do need to, um, before we get too much further along here and, and too far into the summer, uh, with respect to the other aspects of mission preparation to include crew training and flight controller training and, and mission design, software loads, things of that nature, um, we uh, will make a decision relative uh, to, the, uh, to the mission, whether it be the yellow and planned or, uh, or a planned mission, STS-135. Um, somewhere in, in the June-July time frame is, is really when we would like to be able to do that uh, to support all of those other aspects of, of building a mission. Thanks. And I guess just a quick follow-up, because I think in the past, uh, uh, Bill, and, and, and you had mentioned that June was the time. Uh, I, I guess how deep into July would you be able to go then before, um, I guess, hitting that, that benchmark? Thanks. It's, it's kind of hard to say. Um, as I said, we'll... Uh, uh, we'll look here in a couple of weeks at our plan for STS-133. 
Uh, first and foremost, that's, uh, that's on our plate next uh, once we get Atlantis home safely. Um, and that'll be in a week or two here. Um, and we'll take things kind of in priority order after that. Um, it, it depends a little bit on what happens with, uh, with our target launch dates for STS-133 and 134 um, in terms of the effect that it has on, on anything that would become 135 as opposed to 335. So um, we're still trying to, um, we still have a goal to, to kind of have most of that laid out and, and firmed up a little bit more by the end of the month of June. Um, but as I said, if we go a little bit into July, uh, of course, I, th I believe that's, uh, that's supportable as well. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's try one more time with Bill Hartwood. Hey, thanks very much. And uh, Leroy, I don't have any questions. You guys already answered it, thanks. Okay, I don't see any additional questions here in the room, so I think that wraps up our briefing. We'll go back now to live mission coverage. The crew has wrapped up most of their tasks for the day, so they'll be going to sleep at 3.20 p.m. Central Time. We'll then begin playing Flight Day 11 highlights at 4 p.m. and at the top of every hour until the crew gets their wake-up call at 11.20 p.m. tonight. And then they'll begin tomorrow's uh, Flight Control Systems Checkout Day. You can keep up with all of that online at www.nasa.gov. Thanks so much.